Hey everyone, here's a quick video to illustrate our ISCA simulation of Dylan's test and control conditions with his therapist who's administering the ISCA. For simplicity's sake, we've only included 30 seconds of the control condition to represent all sessions. Since your data sheet has five minute intervals, record the first 30 seconds of the intervals and assume that the remaining four and a half minutes mimic the first 30 seconds in responding. The authors started with the control condition, which is why we've decided to present the control condition first and the test condition last. In the control condition, no demands were made and Dylan had uninterrupted access to an array of his preferred items as found in the paired stimulus preference assessment, such as colored balls, Play-Doh, his phone, and a portable DVD player. And Dylan had access to this for the entire five minute duration. After direct observation, a paired stimulus preference assessment, and an interview with Dylan's teachers, the authors decided to synthesize both the access to tangible and escape from demand conditions into one test condition. I'm going to narrate you through this five minute condition of Dylan and the therapist as you collect partial interval of data. There will be an ongoing count up to five minutes to help you establish the interval in the top right corner overlaying the video of Dylan and the therapist. Okay, Dylan, here's your phone. So here we just saw the therapist introduce one preferred tangible item, which was the Dylan's iPhone. And she's allowing access for 30 seconds to establish the MO for when she'll take it away and then place a demand at the 30 second mark. So what this really does is it creates an opportunity for the behavior to occur since Dylan needs to essentially experience a state of deprivation when the therapist removes the tangible item, therefore allowing an MO for the challenging behavior the inappropriate time spent on the floor to occur. Okay, Dylan, we are going to read a book. So what is this? Okay, you don't have to read the book anymore. Here's your phone. Now, we see that the therapist had removed the preferred item and simultaneously placed a low P demand. And in this case, it was a receptive identification in the picture book. The authors placed demands that Dylan was not fluent with and contingent on the target behavior occurring, like we see Dylan flop to the ground, the therapist immediately provided escape from the demand and represented a preferred tangible item. Alright, here's your phone. So what is that? Okay, here is your Play-Doh. You don't have to do that. Again, we just saw that the therapist removed the preferred item, creating a state of deprivation and allowing an MO for the challenging behavior to occur. Uh, the therapist then placed a demand and upon the occurrence of the flopping, the therapist then terminated the task and presented the tangible. Okay, here we got the Play-Doh. So let's build a tower. Okay, you don't have to do the tower. Here's your phone. Another key element included in this particular ISCA with Dylan and the therapist is that once the therapist terminates the task and represents the preferred item, you see her turn away from Dylan. Uh, keep this in mind because we're going to have a little bit of a discussion afterwards about why this might be important in this type of ISCA. What is this? Okay, you don't have to identify objects. Here's your balls. Okay, thank you. Again, we just saw the therapist remove the preferred item, 
place a low P demand where Dylan was unlikely to know how to complete the task. Once the challenging behavior occurred, the therapist then presented a preferred item and terminated the demand placed on Dylan. Okay, babe, here you got your balls. Let's do a tower. Build a tower. Okay, you don't have to build the tower. Here's your phone. So with this type of ESCA, specifically the escape from demand and access to tangibles, you could see kind of how this might happen in the real world or the real life setting with Dylan and his teacher in the classroom because, you know, she's trying to get other students to focus, Dylan flops on the floor, an easy way to get him to stop and to re-engage in something is to provide a preferred activity and escape from the demand. What is this? Okay, here's your phone. While this was conditioned to some operant learning on Dylan and that he gets to escape a demand and allow access to a preferred item, this has also conditioned the teacher and that she receives negative reinforcement by avoiding the challenging behavior so it's kind of a catch-22 and something very unique about the ISCA that you can really get to see in a real life situation that you may not see in a standard FA when you synthesize the conditions.